Faith and Family Fellowship Podcast is a Christ-centered podcast established in 2019 and hosted weekly by Pastor Chris Busher. Addressing a host of topics such as the Great Commission, Christian discipleship, and often featuring interviews with special guests who are experts in their field. The views and events expressed on this podcast and all related materials belong solely to their author and not necessarily to the author's employer, organization, committee, or other group or individual. While all attempts are made to present accurate information, some information may become outdated over time. Faith and Family Fellowship Podcast makes every attempt to timely update any and all such information. Without further delay, here's another powerful episode of Faith and Family Fellowship Podcast. Welcome back to another episode of Faith and Family Fellowship Podcast. Once again, I am your host here, Dallas Montague. Today, we have another wonderful guest joining us, Rex Decker. Rex, how are you today? Good. Hi, Dallas. Nice to be with you today. It's so exciting to be uh, in the doing this podcast. You've got a lot of listeners, and I, I'm thrilled to be here. Yeah, it, it really is a pleasure, and we have so much to talk about today. We have discussed a little bit before we started recording about what we're going to share today, and I think our audience are in for a treat. And before we start talking about what you brought today, Rex, I want to give you a few minutes about your personal testimony. Why are you a Christian today? Well, I believe in Jesus Christ. I love Jesus. And uh, he is the savior of my soul. And I can tell you for sure that when I get to the gates of heaven, I'm not going to be confused. Uh, I won't be professing anything I did as to how I'm getting in. It's nothing but the blood of Jesus that I'm relying completely on. It's the finished work of Jesus on the cross. and. There's no other, to me, I mean, on Christ the solid rock, I stand. All other ground is sinking mm-hmm. sand, and I, I will stand on that. I could go into how I came to that belief, um, but that is a definite statement of what I believe in that Jesus. And I also should share that it's important to, to know that Jesus was sent for the purpose of purchasing back the fallen humankind the race of mankind and the only way that his blood could cover all of our sins is that his blood is holy he is the son of god and it's it's not until you really realize who he is that what he did can click and once you understand oh this is the son of god god sent him for this purpose he he carried it out. He he lived the perfect life. He had no sin in his life at all, but he, he gave that sinless life on the cross for all of us who were basically ruined sinners headed for destruction. And he purchased us. You could say right out of the right out of the slave market of sin. He he bought us off the block. And uh paid all the penalties of our sins and now we we belong to him we owe him everything i mean there's there's nothing that that is is more important than jesus christ I, he his what he did on the cross is the absolute fulcrum of the entire universe of everything that went before it and everything that goes after it it's all pinpointed a hanging on what he did on the cross. And when he was resurrected, I mean, there's no, there's no reason to pray to Jesus if you don't know he's resurrected. And if you don't know he's resurrected, you just, you just have to ask God to help you understand. I mean, that, that, that man, there's people that have said, Lord, I believe, but help my unbelief. Mm-hmm. You know, and that's, a, that's a perfectly legitimate prayer. But I, I, um, uh, I can't say enough about the Lord, and I can't say enough about the Word of God. The Word of God is is uh, food, and it's nourishment, and it's bone of our bones and flesh of our flesh. He has He has given us an amazing trove of information in the Bible, and no matter no matter what uh, language you speak. 
or what your educational level is, anybody that seeks him sincerely is going to find him because mm-hmm. God is looking all over the world for anybody who is sincerely seeking him and coming to the light and looking for him because he will be found. Anybody that seeks him will find him. He'll make sure of that. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Amazing. Amazing. Is, Thanks, Rex. It's good. And we just came out of Easter where we celebrated the resurrection of Jesus. And it's so fresh in our minds. For even non-believers, I think that this is a time of year when people are talking about it. People are posting about it. And what does this mean, the resurrected king? And I think that you just explained it perfectly for our audience here. So thanks for sharing that. (laughs) What a pleasure. You're listening to the Faith and Family Fellowship Podcast. We'll be right back after this quick word from our sponsors. If you tried to become an author and you figured out how to get started but your process was stalled or selling books seems overwhelming, it's not your fault. The unusual way does not work for most folks and that's why so many books end up in the graveyard. It's time to consider the unusual approach. The robot book method has everything you need to publish and distribute your first book. Find more information at robotthebook.com or by searching outlineyournextbookchallenge.com. Sam wakes up and finds himself floating high above in his pajamas. Before he realizes what's happening, he is soaring to the ground. He stops right above his house. Out walks another Sam, identical to him. Sam can't get a hold of the other Sam and even phases through him. Floating all day in his pajamas, Sam follows himself to find out why he's reliving his previous day. He learns the importance of being a good ripple to his family, friends, and teacher. Come enjoy this heartwarming story by searching Tell Me About School, Sweetheart, on Amazon today. Now, you have a Facebook page that you post regularly to positive, Christian, encouraging content, and you also have posted something called The Rapture Plan, and we're titling this episode today, A Message in a Bottle, The Free Rapture Plan. And so, we're going to talk a little bit about your blog and what this Rapture Plan is. And so, first off, what led you to create this Facebook page and just start posting blogs out there? I, I just write. Uh, I, I don't think I can help it. In fact, when I, when I first came to the Lord, I wrote a whole bunch of letters that I called Letters from God because it just inspired me and I, I, would, I couldn't help writing everything. And then I went through a period of dormancy and then I wrote a bunch of letters called Feathers from Space. You know, Or maybe it was the other way around. I forget. I have those things in a box, and I can't wait to look back at them. But the interaction between our life and the Word of God is just like a volcano of issues and ideas that just flow from it. When you read King David's, what he's praying in his Psalms, most of them are prayers, and you read that, and and it just creates ideas that you know, why is he saying this? Would you, you just pray it with him? You're praying it with him. And the parts of your life that uh, uh, line up with that just line right up, except when he prays that, you know, God will smite his enemies. Well, you know, we know a little bit better than that <laughs> yeah. now, thanks to Jesus. So when we when it comes to our enemies, we're praying that God will, um, his face will shine on them and he'll, he'll lift up his countenance upon them and he'll give them peace, the peace of Jesus Christ, because you know, we don't want anybody, nobody to miss out on eternal life. I don't care what they've done to us. There's there's no cause that's great enough to try to nullify the, the gift of Jesus Christ in anybody's life. What would you say for those people out there who are thinking, I'm too dirty. Jesus would never pick me. He didn't die for me, but only those people over there because I've done too many things. What would you say to that person? I, I would say this. I would say, listen. Jesus is right now interceding for you. No matter how deep your filth goes, Jesus goes deeper. There's no bottom that is so low that Jesus doesn't get underneath that. He is below every human failing. He's below every sinful disposition. He's he's underneath of every wicked appetite. And and He's under it, and he's 
praying for you. He's interceding for you. And so um, you just you just join with his intercession. That's what I would say. I would say, look, join the, the prayers of Jesus Christ for you. Just say, hey, Jesus, whatever you are praying for me, I join with that. I'm in agreement with your prayers for me. Mm-hmm. And and I have what I call a short list. It's people who nobody's praying for. That as the qualifications of this, nobody's praying for them, and they're desperate. They they are in desperate need of release or relief or provision or health or healing. They're just desperate, and nobody's praying for them but Jesus, because Jesus is always praying for them because He died for them already. Yeah, and so He naturally is praying for them, and and I. When I pray daily and I pray for the short list, I say, God, you know, somehow I picture some guy on a mountain in Peru and I see somebody in some high rise in Hong Kong and or I don't see them. No, no, no. I just imagine that they're scattered around the world like that. You know, some Russian soldier out on some snowy snowbank in the mud, but they they're caught up. They're imprisoned. They can't get out of their own twisted imprisonment and satan's got his thumb on their neck he's got a chain around their throat and they they need to get away they need to get released and i and i pray for those people i say god for the short list i'm praying and i'm binding satan in the name of jesus and i thank god for for just being able to pray for them and i pray for the lost sheep and the lambs same thing what are some of the things that you're writing about in your blog um okay let's see Today, uh, what I wrote is about a too rich to enter the kingdom. The, the whole question is, are, are we too rich to get into the kingdom of heaven? And, and I say, absolutely. We're all too rich to get into the kingdom of heaven. Because guess what? When we get to the kingdom of heaven, we're not going to have our, uh, our wife or our husband with us. We're not going to have our dads or moms or kids with us. We're not going to have our cars All of these things, we're going to have no money, no property, no retirement, all get stripped away, even the stuff you love to do for Jesus. Maybe you're a worship leader and you just love to play your guitar and sing with the the choir to, to, to worship Jesus. Guess what? That guitar is not coming with you. You're going to be standing there one naked soul, completely naked before God. So, yeah. Everybody's too rich to get in. And when we stand there in that naked soul, God cannot accept that soul. That's not an acceptable soul. I mean, look at all the stuff we've done. And so there we are, a naked, shameful soul. And then we realize there is Jesus standing right next to us. And he's he's shining white garments. And he's just standing, and we're in a we're like in a garden, a beautiful, vast garden of beautiful things. And we're looking at the garden, and Jesus is looking at the garden with us. And he says, you know, my words are seeds. And every word of mine that you believed and accepted in your heart became this became grew this garden that we commune in. And at the judgment seat, looking at that garden, we're going to just say, I'm with him. And he's going to say, yep, I've got you covered. You're with me. And that's wow. how we get in. Wow. <laughs> so that was today's blog. And that was just today. That's a sermon series there. You could do a whole month of sermon series on that topic right there. That's amazing. That was just today. Mm-hmm. Wow. What are some of the other things that you've posted on your blog in the last six months or so? Oh, well, um, I did the concert. I, I like that one because I'm a musician and I just talked about the concert of, um, of Earth. You know, all the waves crashing on all the shores all at one time. You can, you know, there's your, your percussion. And then the wind and the trees. Is coming through, and you you can hear all the, all the um, that's like the mid range instruments, you know, and the patter of rain and the bugle of an elk, and I just talk about what goes into this concert called Earth, and then 
who's the choir director? You know, it's got to have a director, and that's God. And, you know, you're paying attention to the concert, but then if you listen to the director and you hear him say, speaking, and he's what the, what the director is saying is, I love you. I really care about you. I died for you. I want to heal you. I want to heal you of everything. I want you to have a whole fresh life, a new, a new heart, a new mind, a new start. You can just come to me like my child. Be my child. Come to me and I will take you in. I will receive you. And that's what the concert master is saying. That was like one. <laughs> wow. So good. <laughs> so good. And you have something that you said, the rapture plan. What is this? What could you break this down and explain for our audience? What is the free rapture plan that you've released? Okay. All right. This is, I've been an attorney for um, over 40 years. I'm saying that I have been, been walking in the hallways of these courts down here for over 40 years. That's how long I've been a lawyer. And I'm an estate planner and uh, and I'm a devout Christian. And, and the thing that comes to me, both from the issues of life, is that the rapture is for the church. The church is raptured out. But not everybody goes. And the rapture doesn't mean that's the end of salvation for individuals because there is, in Revelations, it talks about a great, vast, num numberless amount of people that come to Christ through the tribulation. Well, well, who are these people? How did they, how did they hear about Jesus? And the rapture plan is designed for the people who get left behind and who we, as the church, we have a little responsibility. I mean, whatever we've got, we're not going to need it. So why don't we put it to use for our family and loved ones who don't make it? Because there's going to be confiscations. There's going to be, uh, you know, just just foreclosures. There's going to be the, that, the property condemnations. The property is going to go. Because there won't be any any respective persons when the Holy Holy Spirit has has gone out. So what this rapture plan does, it defines the rapture, and it's very important to define it so that a bank or a trust office or a brokerage can identify that the rapture has happened. Then once we identify the date that it happened, it backs it up for 10 days because a lot of it has to do with if people have a power of attorney, it has to amend it. If they don't have to, a power of attorney, it creates one for them. And But it backs up the, the, the uh, efficient date or the effective date of this plan yeah. so that if the person isn't dead, if, if you're not dead at that date, 10 days before the rapture, you're presumed to be alive. And which is important because if a if a person writes a uh, power of attorney and then they die, the power of attorney dies with them. Well, when you're when you're raptured out, there's there's no evidence that you died. There's no evidence that you're alive either. And so you're, you're all your possessions are in limbo and they have a 10 year like every country has a different presumption. You have to be missing for four years or seven years or 10 years. Mm -hmm. Before they can presume that you're dead, then your will works. And and up until then, if they they'd say, well, they're not here to exercise their power of attorney. I mean, you don't want your agent to have any problems. So I back it up 10, 10 days before the rapture. And that's when the agency starts. And uh, the, it's just well thought through. Uh, if you have a trust, it will amend the trust only in the case of the rapture. So um, it covers basically all the, the possibilities, and it's 84 pages long. It's, uh, it has, I think, eight appendixes, um, and it just, it just thinks of everything. You know, like your identification may be missing. So what do you do about that? You take pictures of your identification, you put a copy in there, you sign it with a notary, and you attach that 
there's that, and you say that's going to be my ad- identification for this rapture plan. You can find my driver's license or not, you know. And so mm-hmm. all of this is done, and and you go on the web page, you you read the introduction if you're interested. It's not for people that don't believe in the rapture. It's not trying to convince anybody that there will be a rapture. And it's not promising anybody that it, the rapture is going to happen during their lifetime. It's it doesn't do any of that. It just if you believe there's there is going to be a rapture and you want your assets to go to people who didn't get raptured out, then go to the web page, click on the free rapture plan and read the booklet. And then you follow that. There's a little purchase thing, but the, the cost is zero. But it's just how it is. You know, you have to click a purchase thing and it shows zero, zero, zero paid in full. And then there's a red link and then you hit that and it it gives you the whole PDF free and you can download it. And although I own the copyright, I have waived the copyright as far as distribution. So if you're a church leader or just a Christian that you want to share it, you can feel free. You're not violating any copyright by by passing it out or uh, doing anything like that. And, and it's just you print it out and you can fill it out with an ink pen. Just, you know, fill the thing out. And then set it aside because Jesus said, expect me to come back when you don't expect me to come back. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So if we wait until we really expect them to come back, it could be too late. So mm-hmm. you, this is to print out, fill it out, and and you can give it to your, your bank or your, tr- your uh, brokerage, and they'll know, oh, okay, you know, we we'll just put this in your file. Mm-hmm. And so it will prepare people. They will live in the expectancy of Jesus coming back, but they're going to be ready. They'll be ready for it. And meantime, the great thing about it is the message in the bottle is it will it will provide for those people that are left. They're like, well, how did they know that they were going to be gone? What were they reading? What did they believe? And it answers all those questions. Mm-hmm. It answers for them. This is this is how you get into heaven. This is not something. There's nothing you can do to get into heaven because what Jesus did on the cross is what gets us into heaven, and all we have to do is accept it. Unfortunately, I think the people after the rapture are going to have to die for their belief because they're going to be in uh, in a world that is uh, you know governed by the antichrist, and if they insist on believing on Jesus, it'll probably cost them their lives. But that's better than costing, you know, that's better than losing their life for eternity. And uh, anyway, the rapture plan does all that. It's completely free of charge. And I don't know what's going to come of it because that I'm growing as I as I wrote it. And one of the last things I learned as I was writing it, the last edition, was not to expect, not to look for the results, not to try to anticipate what the results will be, not to calculate what my obedience to God is going to do, but just obey and leave, leave the results to God. That's all. That's all. I'm a servant of the King. I like, I like that, you know, Hey, I'm a servant of the King. You know, which one? The King of Kings. That's the one. (laughs) That is very, very interesting. And Rex, I have a couple concerns, a couple questions that maybe our audience could have with this. My thoughts, I'm not a lawyer. I never went to law school, so I don't fully understand how all of this works. In my mind, when the rapture happens, maybe there will be so much chaos that a plan like this couldn't be implemented. What could you say for something like this as a man of law who understands a little bit more about policies and things like that than I do? You're absolutely right. Count on it. There's going to be chaos. There's going to be a lot of people that get hurt when all of a sudden the taxi cab driver disappears out of the car or Mm -hmm. the airline, you know, pilot is gone. Absolutely. Um, Right. So there's going to be chaos. And also the fact that glue, the the decency, the the compassion, that element, the the fruits of the Holy Spirit are going to vanish out of Dodge. And so um, count on chaos. But but the cogs of government will probably operate probably they'll have lists of missing people you know that's one thing that 
that they do. They put up lists. These people are missing. And so the rapture plan says, hey, if there's a list and you check the list, you know, and so the person who is signing up as the or is accepting the duties of agent mm-hmm. has to say, if there's a list, I check the list. And, you know, whatever they either they are or they aren't on the list. Um, but banking institutions and title companies, all of these things are still going to be there. And these documents were well, the rapture is not going to change the law. So these documents operate uh, according to on rails that go back hundreds of years. Yeah. OK, so um, you walk into a Wells Fargo or a Barclays or something or, a, you know, Merrill Lynch, and you've got this document and you're the agent and it, and it has everything put together the way I've designed it. Well, you've got you've got everything you need to step in and take take over those assets. And uh, the chaos is just part of the definition of how we know that the rapture happened. (laughs) Right. Yeah. And that's the answer I was looking for, because, you know, this is a concern when if we go through and do a process like this, who knows if it could hold up in the end. But I think you're you're right. I think you're right. What you said there. Anything else that you can add with the rapture plan, something that our audience would be interested in knowing, or maybe some clauses in there that you inputted that are interesting. Um, yeah, there's there's a there's a catch-all I have of of a trust kind of document. Um, if you don't get raptured, there's a revocation of your plan. <laughs> Interesting, right? <laughs> you got to have that too, right? <laughs> Man. Yeah, you got to have that. And you keep track of who, who you gave the plan to mm-hmm. so that the person that you've appointed as agent knows right where to go. And it isn't just I give all my assets and goods to this one person. You've named your friends. There's a place where you're naming friends and family that say, hey, I want to benefit these 10 people. Mm-hmm. And so I'm naming this person to not just to live high on the hog, but to kind of be a guardian and helping these people. And they, that person in filling out their affidavit of success, acceptance, they're promising to do that, uh, to take care of, of those people as well, the best, the best that they can. Sometimes, you know, the people that you're naming, uh, you may not have them in your plan, like maybe their lifestyle. People have have written them out, excluded them, or or specifically, you know, said they this person can't inherit anything from me. You know, so this this has to be reversed in the case of a rapture. There is that aspect, and um, uh, and but at the same time, if somebody. You've, you've filed a temporary restraining order against somebody that you named as an agent, but later on in the course of your life, they've roughed you up or they've, you know, done something that you think, hmm, they're not a good choice to marshal my money and help take care of these other 10 people. Um, then they, that cuts them out. So if there's been a, um, a restraining order, something like that. It reminds the rapture plan reminds that person. Don't just trust the media or the court records to show that you've got a restraining order, put it down. Mm -hmm. So you, you, you keep your rapture plan kind of up to date. So you don't give uh, authority to somebody that is really a bully uh, or that has proved themselves not thoughtful of others. I have another question. How can this message that you're you're sending to our audience today, how can we incorporate this into the gospel message of you keep going back to it, taking care of those other people? And I like that phrase that you're saying. You're taking care of, you're being responsible for those people who are being left behind. What could you say how this in- incorporates into the gospel message? Well, frankly, it there's there's a lot of ele- evangelism in that rapture plan itself just by filling it out and and having it available that's the message in the bottle i mean the message is the gospel it's much more important than 
the provision, although those provisions are going to be very important. But the message itself is the gospel, and it's in there. There's a place that where the person that fills it out gives their testimony as to what their belief is. And, you know, I've already put in a basic testimony, and then they they can write in however much more they want. But it's in there that that when they sign, they're signing up and saying, hey, I believe that God sent Jesus, his son, to die for the sins of the world. And I believe that he was. Uh, crucified and that he got up from the dead, you know, and that he now lives and reigns. You know, you're just, you, you are basically evangelizing yeah. on the other side of the rapture. That's what this, that's what one of the, one of the effects of this document. Amazing. Rex, thank you so much for all the things that you spoke today about your blog, about your rapture plan. If you could leave our audience with one overall message, what do you think that would be today? It would be that uh, the, just the, the inspiration that I got from Peter, because Peter denied Jesus three times in in G- the day of Jesus's trial when he needed any kind of support or comfort, but it wasn't to be had. And Peter denied him. And when that rooster crowed twice, he was so grievously and bitterly sorrowful, and he went crying crying that he had denied Jesus at the point of need. And I think if people will just think how their sons and their daughters that might be have adopted lifestyles that just don't comport with going on the the rapture, that when they, and you probably prayed for them and you've talked to them and, and they don't listen to you anymore. But when you disappear, in the rapture, just think how they will bitterly weep. They will bitterly cry that they have missed it. They won't have missed it. If you've got that plan for them, you'll not only have given them the hows and the whys, but you also give them the provisions and the wherefores. And and that's the one thing that that, that just kind of hung everything for me in drafting this. It all came out of that and it goes back to it. It's the it's the one thing that those bitter tears that can be dried. Amazing, Rex. Thank you again so much for your time, for all the things that you shared today. Can I have you end our podcast today with a prayer? I would really appreciate it. Oh, man, of course. Father God, in Jesus' mighty name, all-powerful, we do pray for that short list, Father, those people that are out there and nobody else is praying for them but you. And we join in your intercession for those people. We join in your intercession and we bind Satan in the name of Jesus, in the power and authority of his name. We bind Satan from interfering with their rescue, with their deliverance and with their peace and with their healing and with all that they need so desperately. We pray for the lambs and the, and the sheep that are lost. And we pray that you open their eyes and let them realize how to get back to the flock. And send your angels, Lord, and send your shepherds to help them get back to safety, Father, from wherever they've wandered. Father, and I just thank you for Dallas and his podcast. I pray for every single believer that has listened to this podcast, that you will will give them the the inkling and the inspiration. Let Let them feel the Spirit, oh God, the Holy Ghost, guiding them. And, and directing them as they explore this rapture plan, this, ma- this message in a bottle, and let them look into it and, and maybe pass it on to some people that they, that they know could use it. And I just thank you so much, God. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. You've just listened to the Faith and Family Fellowship Podcast. With your host, Pastor Chris Busher. Faith and Family Fellowship Podcast was recorded live in studio with final editing made before uploading. Subscribe today to Faith and Family Fellowship Podcast on iTunes or Google Play. For more fantastic daily content, visit Pastor Chris Busher online via Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram. Don't miss the next episode on Faith and Family Fellowship Podcast.